and they get covered. All right. Live. We're live. Hey, friends. Welcome to the show. It's your friend, Lisa Mason Ziegler. <laughs> and I'm um, so happy to be here with you guys. I'm always happy on Fridays, right? Um, the weekend's ahead, and um, we have a great show lined up for you today. We are going through, this is what you can expect, my best tips for caring for your seedling babies and like when they're ready to go outside, when you should plant them. I'm gonna be sharing some of our dried flowers of those plants that I'm planting right now. And so you can have a little look at what that's going for. We got a prize drawing for those people that are here live watching the show. And then we wrap up the end of the show with a live Q&A. We pick a few questions. Um, and if you wanna submit a question, you can just put in the comments at Lisa and put your question and the girls We'll grab that and put it in the pool for those that we'll pick from. Um, but before we jump in, I just want to, first off, I want to thank everybody that has previously shared our show. Um, but I would ask you, there's a button down on the bottom right-hand side, I believe it is. You can hit the share button and invite your friends and let them know that we're live here. Um, we have so many new people every single week. It just blows us away, y'all. Um, and it's because of y'all inviting your friends. So we thank you and encourage you to continue doing that. So friends, guess what? The book is literally in route to us, all of our palettes. So if you are new here, this is my new book, The Cut Flower Handbook, um, that is literally coming out next week, um, we hope, at the end of the week. And what that means is that the pre-sale is going to be coming to an end. So first, um, this is a book. It's 8 by 10. Um, it's hardback. It's 240 pages. And y'all, it is just be blooming beautiful inside. Um, I just can't tell you how... Look at this. I just love how vibrant and beautiful the pages are. And I love the back cover, right? Right? So, pre-sale will be ending next week, and what else will be ending at that time is that the PDF download of the um, Cool Flower Zone Guide, this is a PDF download that you get immediately when you pre-order the book, and it lists every zone and when, when you plant Cool Flower Spring, I'm sorry, fall, very early spring, some people even winter. Um, so this is the bonus that we're given for pre-orders. If you want a cool flower zone guide, you have to pre-order um, and you can head over to the website. You can't order it here in the app, but you can head over to the website. So this bonus ends as soon as we get the books in stock. Now, everybody that orders the book from us is gonna be getting the flowers that didn't make the handbook. You know, y'all, there's never enough pages. And in fact, I got 16 additional pages from the publisher after I submitted my um, manuscript, which is pretty crazy. They don't usually do that. But we still didn't have enough room. So this is a PDF download that you will receive with your shipping notice when that comes um, with this immediate download. So if you want the cool flower planting guide you have to pre-order you can do it over on the website at the top of every page there's a yellow banner that says pre-order here so you can find that really really easy um and i can't wait to sign a book for you um and i'm super excited and we'll you'll be hearing a whole lot more about that so another thing that we are really excited about is that we have an in-person day with me coming on November, I'm sorry, May 18th of 2024. It's going to be here in Newport News, Virginia. It's going to be like a, a day of farming, flower farming with me. Um, there's We only have 35 seats available. Um, it's exclusive, just meaning we're not broadcasting it. We're not going to be sharing it online. Um, it'll be lectures in the morning right at the end of our street in a great building that's really set up for that. Then we walk down to the farm for hands-on demos, tours, a Q&A, and then we go to the warehouse where we do a wrap-up Q&A, and of course, then you're, you know, invited to shop. Um, so you can join the wait list. Uh, when you go to the website to pre-order, you can actually 
search Lisa and it'll bring it up and you can get on the wait list. And I'll tell you, we already have a pretty enormous wait list. Um, it won't go on sale for a, a, another few weeks, but it'll be coming out here soon. So, housekeeping, y'all. Please double check your account that your email and your phone number is a correct and it does not have a bunch of typos in it. Um, because if we need to reach out to you about shipping or product problem, then we aren't able to get you. So please check that for us. Remember that seed packet only orders ship for free here in the app. That's one of the benefits and one of the things that we can do here in the app. Um, so if you just order seeds, it's for free shipping. But even on products, we have put a cap on shipping. So it's $9.95. So no matter how many products you buy, um, it's still just $9.95. And oftentimes we feature products that cost more than $9.95 for us to ship it to you. Um, so there's additional shipping over on the website. Well, that's where you really have a big savings here on um, the phone app. So if you are watching us from social media, we are so glad that you're here. Um, but you have to know that we do have a phone app available. A lot more features and a lot more fun in the app. You can just go to your phone's app store, search Gardener's Workshop. It is free. Download it. Doesn't take but a second and jump right back over here. That just allows you to create a favorites list. Um, you know, if you want to keep track of something that you don't want to forget about, you can do that. And then you can find your favorites at the bottom of the app on that bar at the bottom. You can also go in the app and watch replays. This is really, really useful um, because you can go in, like go back to last summer, click the video. When it comes up down at the bottom, there's a banner that says shop all. Hit that. That brings up a ribbon of all the products I talked about, but it also includes all the seeds I talked about. You can scroll to the seeds and hit it, and that jumps the video right to where the harvests are. So you can really see what the flowers look like. I mean, that is just such a great benefit here in the app. Um, and then also, when you're in the app, you can make comments and chat with other people and ask us questions. And um, it's always a lively conversation. And we're just really um, glad that we can provide that. So get the app if you would like to embark on some of that good stuff. Now, we always sell out of stuff during the live show um, because, you know, this app and our big website are separate stores. And oftentimes, if we sell out, the team may be bringing stock over from our big website. So if you go into a product and it says sold out, do you want to get on the wait list? If you get on the wait list, that simply means that we're going to ding you when and if new stock is put in. Uh, that way you won't miss out maybe on a special um, or to get something that you've really been waiting for. So... The last thing I want to say before we jump in here is that we absolutely love it when you guys identify yourselves as our family. And that's what the sunflower emoji in the comments means. Those are our people um, that are our students that have taken any of our courses. Once you take our courses and learn with us, we feel like you're one of us, right? Um, and we totally love that. So thank you for doing that. And please give us a shout out in the comments if you are a student. So the giveaway today, friends, once again, is $25 store credit. So Susie has brought it up. You're not buying anything, y'all. Hit the buy button and then get on the wait list. And that's the list at near the end of the show that we will be pulling from to pick a lucky winner for the $25 store credit um, that'll be ready and waiting in your cart if you happen to be the winner. And you do have to be here um, to actually claim your prize to be able to get it, right? So friends, we are deep in cool flower country, right? So this is my book, Cool Flowers, that's all about the concept and how to plant and get cool season hardy annuals to thrive no matter where you live. That's the thing. Um, cool season hardy annuals are um, not as cut and dry as warm season annuals are, but friends, once you figure it out, then you, the door is just open to you. The Cool Flower book really is a deep dive on the Cool Flower concept. I would love to sign a copy for you. It's $22.95, um, and it's an easy read, and you can just really 
capture what it is that you want to do. And it's never too late. I say that meaning if you read the book today and figure out that, oh my gosh, I was supposed to plant last fall, that's when you sit down with your calendar, y'all, figure out when you're supposed to plant, when you need to buy those seeds, and when you need to start them so you're ready for the next opportunity. So it's never the wrong time. And if you need to know a little bit more about the concept of the way that I farm and garden pesticide-free, Vegetables Love Flowers is a three-season cutting garden book. This is not a book about vegetables, y'all. This is a book about why vegetables love flowers. They love being in the presence of flowers for all of the benefits they bring to the garden. This book teaches you how to um, select, plan, prepare, and plant and cut a garden to keep the flowers coming to benefit a vegetable patch. It's just a cutting garden, y'all. This is a great book for beginners, for those that have been doing it that think they do have to use pesticides. This book really will take you by the hand, and I, it also has diagrams in the back to help walk you through it. So vegetables love flowers, and I really would love to sign a copy for you, right? All right, so let's talk about indoor seed seedling care, and I've got some great babies to show you as some examples of some of these. So... Giving seedlings a great start is the way to keep them healthy, right? You don't want to have to figure out what the problem is and how to bring them back from it. And I will tell you that the first few days of a seedling's life makes a huge difference in the rest of their life. So I, I kind of been saying this a lot lately. I feel like people don't take enough time to figure out the seed starting process, their setup and what they have and their hardening off area because they're just zooming through it. I'm here to tell you that those first few days and then weeks of a transplant's life really dictates how it's going to do in the garden. So it is definitely well worth it. So we are big believers in using living soil, not sterile soil. We never have used sterile soil for um, seed starting. Um, it's got natural nutrients in it or organic based nutrients, right? Um, and so, and we've learned planting in soil blocks just kind of makes healthy roots. They get a lot of oxygen um, and they naturally prune. And you know, that's one of the reasons that when you soil block, typically you shave a third of the conventional instructions of how many weeks in advance to start. So let's just say if it says, you know, start the seed eight weeks before, you know, you want to plant it. If you're starting in soil blocks, I would whack three weeks off of that to start with. And it's because soil block transplants tend to grow quicker. And that's because they are just in such a healthy environment. And after soil blocking for 26 years, I can affirm that there's no question that that is true. So the next thing is, is your grow light. Um, to, you, you need a grow light. If you have plants that are stretching and leaning and or are yellowing um, and leaning, that is typically a sign of they're not getting enough light. They're stretching, trying to reach for light is what they're doing, right? Um, so you really want to be sure that for your light, the type of light you have, you have it at the appropriate height um, to provide the bright, dense light that transplants need. They don't need it for very long, but it is key when they actually need it. And then remember that your air temperatures really impact plant growth. You know, when we start getting close to my plants, getting close to the age or the size that I want them to be, but it's looking like we're going to have a week of rain, which means I won't be able to really plant. I can kind of manipulate my growing by air temperatures. Cooler temperatures slow down growing. Warmer temperatures speed it up. So keep that in mind. Also, watering too much or too little really weakens your transplants. They just aren't living a happy life, y'all. Um, and roots need as much oxygen as they need water. And I think that's something we totally forget about. And I'll be real honest, I, I didn't used to talk about that very much, but it is key. That's why your seedlings, no matter what method of seedling, seed starting you're using, in a 24-hour cycle should go through getting watered, they're wet, they're drying, they're wet, they're drying, and by the next morning they're dry again. 
And that dry time is when they're getting a lot of oxygen. So just keep that in mind. You know, we love using the Neptune's Harvest Seaweed Fish Fertilizer weekly in our watering can just to keep that plant vigorously growing and just keeping a healthy lifestyle, basically, right? And we also on, you know, my our method has always been here on the farm. Mondays is when I fertilize in my watering can. It's not an additional chore. I'm just adding something to the watering can. Fertilizer on Monday, and on Wednesday, we would do fungus gnat control prevention, and that is adding the mosquito bits, um, which you'll hear about them later. But we do that on every Wednesday, and that just prevents that larva that can be laid in the soil by the adults from eating your roots, right? So when is a healthy seedling ready to plant out? And I have a really great example to show you here. What I'm looking for is three to five inches. And so here's two great examples. These are not ready. This is stock that's about two weeks old. And this is stock that's about five weeks old, ready to go to the garden. This is the size that I'm looking for, three to five inches tall. And um, they just, they're ready, they're, they've just got lots of leaves, they got a lot of body. And then you look at these, these are, what day is it? These were started February 1st, what is today? 16th. 16th, so they're 15 days old. Um, so the two more weeks, they're gonna look like this, right? So this is the size I am looking for, that's in the small blocker. Um, the three-quarter inch small blocker, and this is stock, and these will look just like this in just a couple of weeks. So that's the size I'm looking for when I take them outside, right? Now, um, some I'm always getting asked, can some, some can be pinched um, in the tray to buy time. So I really don't have a tray that's, you know, when I say buy time, that means that if, you know, let's say it's gonna rain for two more weeks, you just cannot get out in the garden, but your transplants are at the perfect height and they're branching. See, we would never pinch stock, right? That's one stem per plant, which means one flower. You would never pinch stock. This is Lombata. Lombata is a really great example. It's one that gets multiple branches, so it really benefits from pinching. So if this Lombata, which this one is really the perfect height, it's a little, it's more like a three incher, right? If I wanted to buy myself time and these were starting to grow and they're looking like, oh gosh, I'm so afraid they're getting old in the tray, I would pinch them. That's always an option when you have branching annuals to buy yourself time. I like to wait seven to 10 days after pinching before I plant them. Pinching is stressful, planting is stressful. Don't do them right together, right? So spread that out just a little bit. All right, so if you're also trying to buy time, again, you know, it's raining, you can't plant, I would cut back on fertilizer. I'd just skip fertilizing. You're trying to just slow them down, right? You wanna hold them back. You don't wanna do anything to encourage them to grow vigorously now, because you're trying to hold on until you can get them out into the garden. So cut back on fertilizing, um, but don't let them get too old in the tray. Um, you know, the probably the biggest struggle before I became a really big succession planner, I used to always start stuff early because you're, you're, you're excited and you're eager, right? When you totally embrace succession planting, which vegetables love flowers, kind of has the elementary level of that where the cut flower handbook just takes you deeper on that, you always have something to start. You don't need to start anything too early. So you need to learn your windows and you'll figure out and adjust that time. And then you need to learn how to manipulate seedlings that you are caring for by cooling the temperature, slowing down the fertilizer, when you need to do that, right? So now we're gonna do a little soil blocking demonstration. Suzanne and Kelly are here gonna, gonna swap the camera so you guys can see. And um, so we are so loving, we have our ready-made mix back in stock. And we are really, really loving that. And so are y'all, couldn't believe y'all how y'all stormed the, the stock last week. 
um, here in comments sold. And so, all right, they've got me set up. So this is the ready-made mix and it was sifted. We it recommends um, always sifting it. And I've already added the water and actually I may add a, just a little bit more. I tell you, um, the biggest issue that people have is one of two things. It's either um, they didn't add enough I'm still feeling like this needs more water, y'all. If you don't add enough water, it's really hard to get the blocks to come out of the blocker. So I'm just adding a little bit more. All right, so this is the ready-made mix. We still have the soil blocking recipe. If you wanna do yours at home, always on our website, and we're gonna talk about the DIY in just a minute here. So this ready-made mix is all ready to go. Um, this is the small blocker, the one that I use most of the time. You can see that I just push it straight down, kind of jiggling it, and I like to do it twice. You got a question? No, but I just wanna remind everybody that you can see or hide the comments by just simply swiping left or right um, if you can't see the comments, swipe left or right at the bottom of your screen and they'll come up and the same thing to hide them. Oh, that's a good point. All right, so I have filled the chambers and I'm going to use our wonderful new little mini reusable foam tray. This holds one set of 20. Bobo and I are so stoked about this for our tomatoes because we don't need 40 or 60 or 100 tomatoes of the same variety, right? This tray is going to be super convenient. So I'm just going to pop those out and see how beautiful they are. And so the reason that we have all these different size trays, y'all, to make the most out of the real estate of your heat mat and your grow lights is by always doing trays full of blocks. Um, you know, if, if I used a larger tray and only wanted 20, then you're wasting all that other space on your heat mat and your grow lights. So this, this is the mini, which is the smallest, and it's super um, helpful and useful. So now I am gonna use, I'm gonna show you how I sow seeds. So this is um, our aluminum seed pan which has no static electricity, and it will revolutionize your seed starting. This is a toothpick with saliva, better known as spit, on it, but maybe not enough. And literally, the seed just hops right on to your toothpick. And that happens because there's no static electricity fighting you. I never, I can remember when I learned about the aluminum seed pans. It changed my life, y'all. So I'm just picking up a seed. And so you do what your seed packet tells you. Does the seed get covered? So I'm sowing right on the surface, right? So these are seeds that actually need light. If it needed darkness, I would just simply push the seed deeper into the block to create that darkness. So that's how I sew. I use a toothpick and the aluminum seed pan. And then we, I'm gonna tell you about the rest of the process um, oh, here we are. We're coming back up. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you about the rest of the process when we get there. So that's how I sow the seeds. Um, and then let's talk about another option for starting the seeds. If you, um, so I didn't even talk about the soil blocker kit yet. I got to do that, right? Yeah, that's next. Okay. So the soil block, the, the updated soil block maker kit has the ready-made mix in it. So this kit includes the small blocker. It includes a bag of the six quarts of the Fort V Vermont compost, which we recommend sifting. It also includes six, five of these. Um, this is our large reusable foam trays. Three sets of 20 will fit on each one. Um, we use these for years, y'all. They are not disposable. It's got the seed pan, it's got the toothpicks, it's got the wooden plant markers, as well as your choice of either three cool season seeds or three warm season seeds. You select that when you make your purchase. And y'all, these are our best selling seeds. These are our customers' favorites. Um, either the zinnias, the coxcomb, and the basil mix, or the Indian Summer, Rudbeckia, the Fever Few, and Rocket Snaps. So just your choice. And better yet, y'all, this kit 
also includes my seed starting made easy um, online course, which I think now it's like a hundred minutes 116. long, 116 minutes broken up into a lot of sessions that takes you through starting seeds in the garden, how to soil block from beginning to end. I have my sunflower planting, how I do that in there, um, as well as the swift blockers shows you how to do that and how to choose which blocker to use. So that online course is included. This whole kit is $89.95. So you get the blocker, the ready-made mix, the course, three packs of seeds, five trays, the aluminum seed pan, the toothpicks, and the wooden plant markers for $89.95 plus $9.95 shipping. And then once you pay that $9.95 shipping, you can add anything to it, and it, there's no additional shipping for that. Now, if you wanna make your own soil blocking mix at home, which we've done that, we've done that for years, right? Um, this kit, which is called the DIY, includes the small blocker again. It also includes the seed pan, but this has the DIY nutrient um, that you mix with your sifted peat moss or uh, peat moss or cocoa fiber and compost. This bag of nutrient, which is powder, um, is enough to make six recipes. One recipe um, starts about five, makes about five or 600 of the small blocks. So this bag potentially could make up to 3,000 of the small blocks. So you get the blocker, the pan, and the DIY nutrient mix for $49.95. Um, and Oh, so we just added more soil blocking kits. We sold out already. So if, if you went and it wasn't there, go back. Kelly just brought more over from the big website. Now, one of the specials we're offering today is that we have brought our expansion seed starting kit over here. And what's special is the fact that this normally has additional shipping on it, but it's just $9.95 over here is the special today. And the expansion kit has everything you need to support your seeds. Um, and this is really made for the person that bought a soil blocking kit, soil block maker kit before. So you've got the soil blocker, you know, you've got the course, you've got all that. This is all the supporting um, crew that for that. And that's what we're gonna show you here. So first off, this kit includes this grow light. It comes with the stand. It is about 24, 26 inches wide. Um, its footprint is about 20 inches deep. And friends, this grow light, which is more economical than our grow light that we carried for years, this is the newest technology and the new model, supports twice as many plants. So we can actually put that this, um, you can put a long tray which has 100 plants, and it supports it from side to side. Our old light only had 12 inches. So that is a huge benefit. This grow light also has a built-in timer, and we use it on the 18-hour timer, so you don't need a separate timer. So the expansion kit includes this grow light with the stand, but you can also um, hang the light from a shelving unit if that's what you have. So it has the grow light. It includes the Neptune's Harvest Seaweed Fish Liquid Fertilizer that I mentioned to you earlier that we put in the can, um, the watering can every week. It also includes the burlap, which is what I lay on the surface of my soil blocks when I start them because, you know, so many of the seeds that we start um, are surface sown. Um, so this retains moisture, so it includes the burlap. And it includes the fungus gnat kit, y'all. So it comes with the mosquito bits that you add to your watering can on Wednesdays, once a week. And it also has the yellow sticky traps to monitor the adults. So it has that. And it also includes the seedling heat mat, another key piece that people tend to skip and then struggle. And it includes a six and a half foot by 50 foot grow light. I'm that grow light. Row, row cover. cover. I'm losing my mind, y'all. Um, row cover. And so all of that is in the expansion kit. And it's $161.95. And so again, that was made for the person that already has the soil blocking kit. 
and now you need all the supporting um, structure to get your seedlings really, really healthy. And with just $9.95 shipping, that's the special. So now we have the soil set, okay? The soil set gets your soil really in shape. So first off, this set includes, again, the fungus gnat fighting kit. And that is, is it five? Five, five of the yellow sticky traps a bag of the mosquito bits, and you put one tablespoon per quart of water. And then it also includes the DIY nutrient that you add your sifted peat moss and compost to. It also includes our toothpicks in the little handy dandy toothpick holder. It includes the seed pan, but the best part of the whole set, y'all, is the sifter. This will sift your soil so easily. It just fits right on the top of a five gallon bucket. You sift your soil. You know, the, the bits that you'll get, put them in your garden. They're just not for seed starting mix, right? So the seed, soil set is $53.80. Um, so that will get you set up to make your own. Oh, now if you just, um, if you just want the sifter, you can buy that separately. Here it is on my can. Wait a minute, y'all. I'm going to show you. So here it is. It just fits right on. This is a five-gallon bucket. This is what I sift in. It just fits right on top. I keep a pair of gloves in here, um, and that's what I sift either if I'm sifting peat moss or compost or the ready-made mix. Whatever I use, it is super easy. So the sifter is $19.95 and um, $9.95 shipping, but again, you can stack your order because you're only gonna pay $9.95 shipping once. There you go. All right, so if you just need more nutrient mix to make your own blocking mix at home, this is the two pound size, which is $15.95. And again, this will make, how many? Six recipes. Each recipe makes about 500 of the small blocks. So that'll get you fixed up. It goes a long way, y'all. But if so this is nothing but rock phosphate powder and green sand, both of which are difficult to find, which is why we started mixing this years ago. If you live in a farming community, you might be able to find these at a farm supply store, um, but that's why we mix it. It has to be powder. I mean, we're talking about seed starting, y'all. This is not out in the garden. You can't use granules. You can use them, but it won't work very well. Um, so that is green sand and rock phosphate. And you don't need this. Exactly. So with the ready-made mix, this already has those nutrients in there. So this is the Fort V um, Vermont compost in the six-quart bag. If you need a big bag, you can find it over on our website, and y'all stormed that last week, too. There's a 20-quart bag available. So this is, um, we recommend sifting it, but it does not need nutrient for your seed starting um, to be added to the mix when you're making the actual blocks. So let's talk about I kind of alluded about trays and why you need so many different sizes. I have so many different size trays, y'all. It's all about making the best use out of your heat mats and your grow lights because, friends, even 26 years in, I never have enough heat mat space, ever has it been said, or grow lights. I mean, I'm always like having to push somebody outside onto the carport a little bit sooner than I want to. Having the appropriate size tray to fit the number of blocks that you're starting really helps you make the most of it. So, we have, this is called the mini. This holds one set of 20 blocks. This is $1.95 for five trays. It's reusable foam. We used the foam trays for years, y'all. This is not meant to be disposable. So, that's the mini. This is the small. This holds two sets of 20, so that's 40, or it'll hold two sets of the two inch blocks. It's tight, but it fits. That's a great example of why would you, you know, people say, why don't you use the bigger blocker? Um, it's because of its space savviness. This will hold either 40 of the small blockers or eight of the large blockers. So that's the small and that's $2.95. They're also available in 25 packs, which you can see the pricing online. And then this is the size that comes in your um, soil block maker kit. This is the large. It comes, it holds three sets of 20. And um, this is $3.95 for five trays. And again, you can 
um, by a 25 pack also. So friends, I will tell you that we made a couple of beds here yesterday on the farm. The beds were already prepared, but we laid the Bio 360 on it out in our no-till beds. We're always experimenting the quickest, fastest, most effective ways to do it. Um, and I just can't tell you, we would not be farming. I would have never farmed at the level I farmed without this biodegradable film for its weed suppression. Particularly during the cool season where the cool season weeds are growing, but your cool season plants aren't doing a lot of top growth, which just lets, it just opens the door for weeds to grow like crazy. Chickweed and henbit and all of those guys, right? Um, so this is biodegradable film. It is nothing like landscape fabric, y'all. Um, this is, you can literally just pop a hole in it. We use a dibber or the bobo tool. Do we have bobo tools? Are they in stock? Okay. Um, the bobo tool, you'll find it here. It's a, um, Dandelion weed. Is it called the weed or what is it officially called on the website? Somebody look that up. So that's what Bobo uses to poke her holes in the Bio 360. The Bio 360 is dark on one side, blackish, and on the other side, it's light. It's either gray or white. And the difference is what is the afternoon temperatures when you're, it's called the hand weeder tool is the dandelion weeder that Bobo uses to pop these holes really easy. And I talk about that because that is a really common misconception. People think it's landscape fabric, which you have to burn holes in. This is nothing like that, totally different. So depending on what the afternoon temperatures are when you are gonna be planting the transplants is how you decide which side to use. If it's gonna be below 80 degrees, then you use the black side up because that'll help to warm the soil a little bit. But if it's over 80 degrees, you don't want to cook your seedlings. We make the beds with the light side up. Um, and so this has a great weed suppression um, property about it. So it comes in, we have several options for you. There is a one pack of the 50 foot. It's all 48 inches wide. One 50-foot piece is $24.95, and that is a reduction in the price, y'all. We've come down with our new packaging method. Or you can buy a six-pack of 50-footers for $119.95. Or if you have longer beds, we now have 100-foot pieces. A one-pack is $39.95, or you can get a three-pack of 100s for $110.95. Um, Love this stuff, and really, um, you can learn more about it on the website. So we are starting to um, prepare to support our cool flowers, y'all. Stuff is starting to elongate. Our snaps are already almost knee-high. Um, and so this is the flower support netting, which is plastic. This, again, is reusable from year to year. When it is installed properly and removed at the right time, it's easy to use, and when it's installed properly, um, it is not really a threat to people and pets and wildlife. Um, it comes in a 36 inch wide piece, 20 feet long or 50 feet long. It's $11.95 or $21.95. If you're a farmer that needs a big roll, you can find that over on our big website. Um, and there's video over there actually showing how to install it. So if you just need fertilizer, we're offering that today too individually. It's $15.95 and you put, um, I follow the, how, what do they actually call it? I follow the house plants, which is one tablespoon per gallon of water. Um, shake it well, it does have a smell, so don't, um, I wouldn't do it in my house probably. Deal of the day. Deal of the day, y'all, because it's that season. It's the fungus gnat fighting kit. So this is the mosquito bits and the yellow sticky traps for $15.96. There's regularly $9.95, so you're saving four bucks, right? So that is the fungus gnat fighting kit. So sister, do you want to step over here and water these tray? I'll hold the tray. I haven't watered. You could use our little. Sure. So Suzanne's going to water for us. Have you showed this before? You I showed have, this once before. I've showed the can, but I've never watered. So this is our sweet little, it's called an espresso watering can, but it is precious, especially if you just have a few seedlings that you need to water. And how beautiful is this just to leave it sitting on your, your shelf. But here is our tray of seedlings. And when we water, we want something with a gentle stream, which this does. So you just water the edge of the tray 
not directly on the seedlings and you soon learn how much water to put in. You want it to go, let's see if I can turn it a little bit. You want it to completely cover the entire bottom of the tray and then you give it a few minutes and I can already see that this one doesn't have enough. You give it a few minutes to soak up. You want the center seedlings in the middle here to be moist looking and you can usually tell they're usually a little bit lighter and then they get dark as they absorb the water. So you just want to make sure that the center seedlings in each one of these little sets of blocks is getting water and see I poured a lot of water in there and it has already soaked it all up. <clears throat> so I might even put a little bit more in here and what we usually do is let them sit for five minutes, come back and any water that's standing we just pour that off. You do not want your seedlings to be sitting in water. They should dry out overnight and be ready for water the next morning. So this precious little watering can does the perfect stream of water. You gently water in the corner of your tray. You don't want to water directly on your seedlings. You don't want to water on top of your seedlings. But this is just the beautiful, perfect little can to have. Um, just to sit around the house or to use for your plants or your seedlings. And this is $29.95 and it's stainless steel. Very beautiful. Next we have the kitchen composter. We used to sell these when we did shows and events and this is really get great. The top is really tightly sealed and when you, do, when you compost stuff, you do not want to put any fat, meat, grease, anything like that in it. It needs to be all chopped up vegetables, you know, the greenery that you don't use on your vegetables, but you just put them all in here. Even um, banana peels, I wouldn't really put banana peels in my compost, but anything big with a rind you want to cut up good, but this just seals it and keeps it from smelling. But again, if you put what you're supposed to put in your composter, it's not going to really have a smell. But this will fit nicely under your kitchen sink and just put all your scraps in there and then take them out to your compost heap and um, turn it into great food for your soil. Kitchen composter is $15.95. Um, we love that. Now, one of our favorites that we brought back is the Slug X. Any of you that have slugs that are eating your plants, they always are a problem on my pansies, but currently they are climbing up my fence around my trash can and leaving marks on the wood painted fence. Um, so I'm going to have to take a couple of these home just to put where I don't even have plants. But this is great. Slugs, believe it or not, love beer. So this is a little container. You put beer down in these little reservoirs. Is it Paps Blue Ribbon? Is their favorite. And um, then you would just sit this top on and they have a way to get in. And then we put a cinder block or a brick on top of this because it keeps the golden retriever from drink, drinking the beer. It also keeps the daggone raccoons from eating the pickled slugs. But the slugs can do a lot of damage and this will really help you control their numbers um, and get a few of these and put around and just check them regularly, dump the dead slugs out and fill it up with more beer. And yes, they drink, get drunk, fall in and drown. Sorry tough end, but if you gotta go, you know. So the Slug X is $19.95, and, um, and it will really help control those nasty little critters. They like PBR because it's got more yeast. Yeah, they like the yeast in the Paps Blue Ribbon, so find the less expensive uh, brands, and they usually have more of that in it. Now this is our stripper. This is made for stripping rose stems, all of those nasty little thorns on the roses. But we've also found that it's really great for stripping leaves off of different things. Does this do Sweet William? Sweet William is always hard to strip. Mm -hmm. We'll have to try that on Sweet William because they are really difficult to strip. But anything, you just lay the stem in here and you pull it down and it just knocks off all the leaves and or thorns if it's a thorny critter that you're working with. Um, the stripper is $19.95 and this is a keep forever kind of tool. Um, you just always want to have it handy. Next up we have, of course, our favorite gloves. These are our nitrile touch gloves and they have the nitrile coating on the fingers here. I'm going to slip my hand in. I wear a medium. I have a large hand for a woman. These are unisex sized. Um, this, the touch comes extra small up to large. And like I said, I wear a medium. I have a big hand for a woman. So uh, most women will wear medium small 
petite women or children would wear the extra small. Extra small comes in purple. The other ones come in an assortment that you'll just randomly get. Um, so you can get one for $7.95 or a four pack for $24.95. We wear these, they're like our second skin. We keep them on all day. We don't come through the tips. They really don't cause your hands to perspire a lot um, and there's nothing you can't do with them. They're very grippy. You can um, milk cows, quilt. We have all kinds of stories of what people use these for, but they're also great in the garden or on the farm. We live in them. So get your gloves, put some extras, keep some extras around in case you lose one or um, if you need a great gift. Now we have the tough. They are sized the same exact way. I would wear a medium in these. These have a double coating of the nitrile on the palm. So these are good for heavy duty work like moving concrete, bricks, um, mechanics use these, golfers use these. It just has a thicker coating on the hand. We tend to wear these if it's a little cooler. It does help protect your hands a little bit better from the cool. So this is the tough. The tough comes from small to extra large. So if you have a guy with really big hands, then these are gonna be the gloves for him in the extra large. And one pair again is $7.95 or you can get a four pack and that is $24.95. Keep them on hand, great gifts. You don't wanna be without them. Next up we have our gauntlets. These are rose, we're originally rose gloves. Again, unisex, I wear a medium. I have a big hand for a woman. These have great thick pads on them. They protect you from brambles, poison ivy, any critter that you wanna tackle out in the garden. We've been known to rescue birds with these on as well. They really protect your hand, protect your arms. They're man-made material. You throw them in the washing machine, hang them to dry. So poison ivy, you can get washed off of them so they're safe for you to use the next time around. These come from small to extra large. They're $37.95. If you know a gardener, these are a gift that they will love forever. All right. Now we're gonna have a reminder on the giveaway. If you would like to be entered to win the $25 um, credit on your account, then be sure to hit the button now. Susie's bringing that up. If you haven't already registered to win that, you must be present and we'll call it out towards the end of the show. Next up, we have Lisa. <laughs> Oh, sister, I had forgotten about rescuing birds in those gloves. Yeah. That's true. An well, oh, we, we rescued an owl, a great horned owl, which they're pretty ferocious, and a woodpecker out of our neighbor's fireplace. That was, Suzanne reminded me of that. Oh, my goodness. that My neighbor was terrified of, the bird was only like this big, but he had a pretty mean pecker, you know, so he was really something. So, now we're on to seeds, and before we jump into seeds, I always like to talk about how to store your seeds. Y'all behave yourselves. <laughs> so this is how we keep our seeds dry and humidity for humidity free. These are desiccants, right? So this absorbs the moisture. We drop this into whatever we're storing our seeds in. You can get a two pack for $2.95 or a 10 pack for $9.95. This is one of those things you just wanna have on hand whenever you actually need it. And because we store our seeds properly, right? And you can too. We still have a few 2023 mystery grab bags. Y'all, these are 75% off. We have veggies and herbs and some warm season sets. So you'll find that here in the app. Um, and this is literally where I got my vegetable seeds from and a lot of our other seeds that we're starting here on the farm. So the seeds I'm starting on the farm this year are actually last year's seeds. It's perfectly fine. We just don't sell last year's packaged seeds, right? Um, normally. So you still have that amazing chance to do that. All right. So now we have some new seeds available for you guys. And these are things that I've grown for a long time. Right? So the first one is the, um, they call it Dynasty Sweet William. Dynasty Mix. I knew there was a second word. Y'all, this is a Sweet William that has a ruffled bloom. I mean, one of the things that I love about Sweet William, but I don't love so much, is how uniform their blooms are. They just kind of look, you know, they don't have much texture. This is it. This does not need fertilization, which means it does not need a cold treatment. It's a mix, um, and we've grown it now. This is our third year, and we absolutely love it. So get the Dynasty mix, and then this Sweet William, 
does need vernalization. What that means is a cold period. This is the most beautiful mix ever. It's called Super Duplex Mix. And we start this here on my farm in the middle of summer so that we'll have it ready to go in the garden as soon as the summer ends, like late August, early September, because it needs to get in the garden and be established when cold weather starts so it gets that cold period to bloom the next year. This is truly a biennial, right? But it is an amazing cut flower. Look at all these pinks. Is this not wedding flowers, right? So that's super duplex, so get that guy. And then, <clears throat> you know, we grow a lot of Sweet Williams, right? This is our go-to. This is Amazon Sweet William, and I actually have some dried here. It's not the best looking dried flower, but if you're making wreaths and you need a little filler in the background, it's definitely doable. The Amazon series, it does not need vernalization. It goes from seed to bloom in 16 weeks. And here's some that we have um, that's getting ready to go out to the garden. And see, here's one trying to bloom. Amazon is famous for doing this, y'all. Just don't just pinch it and go on about your business. Don't even worry about it. It's usually only one in a bunch. So the Amazon series is the series that I actually succession plant. I plant it in the fall. I plant it in very early spring, and then I plant it again four weeks later because it is more heat tolerant than any of the other varieties. Um, and it comes in three separate colors, which you can find them all here um, in the app, but purple is my personal favorite. Y'all, Persian Cress, which is an amazing filler, texture, fun interest thing to grow, you know that one of our florist friends, Ellen Frost, um, who is the florist that only uses local flowers in Baltimore that's done courses for us, says that she buys, of the flowers that she buys, about 50% are foliage type stuff. Foliage is very, very important. Cress, it's not the flowers that we grow it for, but it's for these tiny little seed pods that follow that. This is what it looks like dried. It is super interesting. It's got all these little seed heads, <clears throat> this is such an end color right now, y'all, right? Tan dead. <laughs> That's what I call it. <laughs> but this in the right vase, sitting in a corner in a big urn or something, totally beautiful. Persian Crest is a cool flower. Um, we fall and very early spring plant it, and you won't be sorry. Once you grow it, you'll never not have it again. And so, oh, I have to show you all this. this so, Billy Balls, right? Craspedia. Who doesn't want, this is a year old. Dries beautiful. Look at the seedlings. How beautiful are these guys? So we fall and very early spring plant billy balls, which is what's called in the industry. It is deer bait. Um, and so we always want to plant it. This was started the 17th of That's January. Good. So it's like almost, yeah. it's four. I mean, this will be planted next week. So Craspedia is a super fresh, and if you don't sell it all, you can just dry it. And y'all, you know, this is the seed we had grown for us because it just was not available anywhere. This is Lombata Minarda. It is different than all the other bee balms, the bloom shape and its habit. Here it is dry. It is a super cool flower, y'all. And so we, this is one that I fall and very early spring plant. And here, this I already showed you earlier, this is the seedlings. This is 60 plants ready to go to the garden. It's a heavy brancher. You could pinch some of it. Um, and we succession plant that fall, very early spring, and then one more time. So that is Lombard, Lombada Minarda. And here's another one we're getting ready to plant in the garden. This is um, Carthamus, better known as Safflower. This is real, I cut this from bud before you even see any color as a filler in early spring, and then use it up until it blooms, and then it dries beautifully. This is great for making wreaths, y'all. Um, so, Carthamus safflower, and it is really, really beautiful, and here's what it looks like. Can't wait till we have real flowers, y'all. All right, so, and we've shown this one before. This is ping pong scabiosis. Look at these big seed heads. Cool flower, we're getting ready to plant more of this right now out into the garden. 
And that's what it looks like fresh. And this is one of my most beautiful and delicate dried flowers, y'all. This is Ami Magus. It is just gorgeous. And this is, it's that white Queen Anne's Lace look-alike flower that people love so much. And, you know, we don't often have enough left over to dry it, but we love the results that we got. This is the Fever Few um, White Wonder. It's been renamed so many times, y'all, I have to look. Um, White Wonder is one of the easiest to grow. It's strong germinator, strong grower, and it's pretty cool when it dries also. Um, and when it's in bloom, it's the one that's a double. Really, really beautiful. All right, friends. So that's all I got for you today. Um, but remember to stick around for the q and I'm going to pick a couple of questions to answer. And just keep in mind that over on our big website, thegardenersworkshop.com, we have tons of videos and blogs and our podcasts. We have two podcasts, Field and Garden, and we also have Seed Talk with Lisa and Lane. And yesterday's episode was about the soil blocking mix frequently asked questions. Um, Seed Talk also is over on our YouTube channel. Lane always puts together a really nice slideshow so you can see imagery. Um, so check that out over there. Um, and remember that um, we host the Ask a Flower Farm on Instagram on Wednesdays. This Wednesday, it's me. We also oftentimes have other hosts. Um, so join me at 1230 it is 12.30, right? 12.30 Eastern Time on Wednesday on our Instagram, which is Gardener's Workshop Farm, and would love to meet you there. And guess what, friends? We have a winner. Where's my... Here it is. We have a winner. And I hope you're here because you have to be here to claim it, and I love giving stuff away, y'all. The winner is Robin... I'm going to spell your last name, Robin. L-O-G-L-I-S-C-I. Robin, L-O-G-L-I-S-C-I. -I. Hope you're here, Robin. Give us a big old shout out and congrats on winning. You will have a $25 store credit waiting in your cart when you go to check out if you're here to claim it, right? So Kelly will add that as soon as you give us a big old holler. So stick around for the live Q&A starting now or thanks for joining us if you're heading out, right? All right, so we have some questions here. Number, let's, let's try this one. What seeds should I put in the refrigerator before starting? So that's a really common question that we get because people talk about it. So all the seeds that I um, recommend, sell, and talk about in my books are all um, do not require any kind of special treatment to get them to sprout. Okay, none of them require that. There are a few that benefit from being popped in the freezer for a couple of weeks, and that's all the cool season hardy annuals. Think about it. They're cool season hardy annuals. What a variation in temperature does is tells them when to break dormancy. So if you put them in the freezer for a couple of weeks and then you take them out, plant them, give them a little warmth, give them a little water, guess what? They're like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to wake up now, right? It just gives, gives them, in my mind, a clear message to sprout. So none are required that you will hear me talk about. There are some that need to be primed and all kinds of stuff. Those are not the varieties or the seeds that we sell that I talk about in my books or that you'll see me start, okay? So hopefully that helps to clear that up. Are there any cool season seeds that should not be put on a heat mat to germinate? Um, so there are a couple that we have learned um, just don't want any heat at all. Sweet peas, we no longer put on heat mat. We actually put them outside on the carport, protected. Um, and sweet peas, Ami Magus, Daucus. So think about that. Um, and sweet peas, Daucus, Ami Magus, and, bu and Buplurum. Um, and so they all kind of, you've got to figure out for your environment. You know, I talked about that earlier in the show. I think people do not spend enough time and focus. If you're a flower farmer, you better, this is an important step that a lot of people miss. You really need to make sure your growing area 
is what it needs to be so that you can quickly and efficiently and successfully start seeds. People, I mean, I hear people, well, I have to do this, this, and this to harden them off. I'm carrying them in and out, in and out, in and out of the house. It's like you need to establish a place outside where you can put your seedlings out and leave them. Who has time to do that? If you're a flower farmer, you shouldn't have time to do that, right? Um, so those are the varieties. Um, and then I would just put them outdoors on that hardening off area to germinate. Dill, dill, ami, daucus, and sweet peas. Irrigation schedule, do you always have it on or how do you decide how long to run? So that's a really great question too. Um, so no, it's not always on. Irrigation um, is very, um, it's for your condition. So you need to monitor and figure out when to actually turn irrigation on. People are quite surprised to learn that we very seldom irrigate because we get such frequent rain here in southeastern Virginia. But the way that I know when it is time to, to actually irrigate is, y'all, it's the finger test. You just stick your finger, pull, I mean, I would take a trowel, a, you know, a hand trowel, and just stick it in the ground and pull the soil back and stick your finger about four inches down. And if it's dry, it's time to irrigate. And then the other thing you have to, and nobody can tell you this, because it's all about your soil conditions. Then you have to figure out how long you need to run your irrigation. Um, you know, my recommendation is always to have a really great relationship with an irrigation supplier. Um, and that way, when you buy your stuff, you are not gonna go to a local place normally and get irrigation stuff and have a really expert person there available to help you. When you buy from irrigation suppliers online, they have all kinds of tutorials and they have a support line normally. And if you're their customer, they'll help you. Um, and that's all part of that. So you really have to monitor and determine when to turn it on and off. Zone 9B, my October planted stock is blooming on six inch stems. Should I have started them a month later? Our winters are mild. We don't have temps below freezing. Yeah, you know, I talk about this in my new book, The Cut Flower Handbook, that while people in your situation can grow just about everything, it's a little more difficult to actually figure out when exactly you're supposed to plant it because you don't have freezing winters. So stock is one of the plants that, as you can see from the ones that we've shown you, we only plant that in very early, what we consider very early spring, and it is because it blooms quick. And I don't want it to bloom in the middle of winter. Unless you're growing it in a house, um, you don't want that to happen. So I would say you, you're going to have to figure that out with timing. And I would definitely start a month later. Um, but yes, it is blooming and uh, before it's elongating. Um, so I would definitely plant it later. Do zinnias produce better in pots or in the ground? Definitely in the ground, although they can grow in pots. But it depends on what you're growing them for. Can I grow them in large galvanized buckets, the big ones from Tractor Supply? Um, so, yeah, funny you should ask that. We're getting some of those big troughs that they sell and doing an experiment. Yes, you can definitely grow in, the key word is large, a large mass of soil. You have to drill lots of drainage holes if they don't provide them, which I don't think they do. Um, lots of good drainage. I like to put containers like that up on bricks or something so that they can drain freely, that that poor drainage and those holes getting stopped up are a problem. You do not want to put gravel in the bottom. I mean, they say just fill it up with good draining soil and that's what works best. Um, but you'll get better cut flower production in the ground, but you can grow them in large containers. All right, I'll take one more. Status. Okay to fall plant or just early spring and succession planting in fall? The real question, before I say that, the whole goal of my new book, The Cut Flower Handbook, is to help people to answer many of these questions that I'm answering for you, to help guide people to figure out and write it in the book. It has a place for you to write it. When do I plant cool season hardy annuals? When do I plant... Um, and status is a cool season hardy annual. It totally depends on 
what is your winter hardiness zone? We know that status is winter hardy to zone seven. So if you live in zone seven, eight, or nine, you definitely should be fall planting it and then planting it again in very early spring to succession plant it. I don't find that it's necessary to plant it yet again. Um, the stems just get too short when I plant it later, closer to real spring. Um, so that is, you know, it's like, I don't want to teach y'all, I don't want to give you a fish. I want to teach you how to fish so you can get as many fish as you want for the rest of your life. And that's the purpose of the book, the Cut Flower Handbook. I mean, it truly is for you to figure out once you unlock that, open that little door and peek in, you never have to wonder about that anymore. Um, and it takes you through the whole process of how to do that. And to order that book, you go over to, you can't pre-order it here on the app. Pre-ordering is only got a few days left. If you want the pre-order bonus, which is the Cool Flower Zone Guide, which tells you what, if, what zone, if you're in zone nine, there's a zone nine page, and it tells you which cool flowers to plant when. That's what it does for every zone. Um, and that bonus is going to be gone as soon as pre-order ends, and that is this week because the books are on their way to us now. Um, and that'll really help you. So pre-order over on the big website. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me here today. I love doing this and being here with you. The whole crew that's here, um, really appreciate y'all showing up. We love showing up for you. And I can't wait because next week we're having a party, y'all. Till we meet again, friends.